Okay, let's start. Uh, our time is over, and uh, we start the main topic <coughs> of our <coughs> today lecture uh, is so-called uh, quadratic forms. What does it mean uh, quadratic form? Uh, are you ready to, to start? Uh -huh. Okay, let's start. <clears throat> and um, what does it mean uh, quadratic form? Uh, quadratic form is uh, some mapping from the uh, vector space V to the basic uh, uh, field. We will uh, deal with uh, vector space V, which defined uh, our real number field R. And uh, such mapping from V to R is called quadratic form. If exists such symmetric bilinear form B, such that uh, the above-mentioned quadratic form is a restriction of this bilinear form to the diagonal. Uh, other words, the value of the quadratic form Q on some vectors V is equal uh, the value of this symmetric bilinear form B on the pair of concise vectors B from V and V. From this definition and from the properties of the bilinear form uh, follows the following property of uh, quadratic form. First of this property, uh, quadratic form from the sum of the vectors V plus W is equal sum of the values quadratic form Q on the vector V and on the vector W and plus the twice value of uh, symmetric bilinear form on the pair of the vector V and W. And from uh, and uh, second uh, property, if we multiply uh, any vector v on uh, scala alpha and apply to this vector uh, quadratic form Q, we obtain the product of the um, square of the scala alpha on the value of the quadratic form on the vector v. Uh, as in the case of the uh, bilinear form, uh, we uh, can introduce the notion of the uh, positive definite quadratic form. Uh, quadratic form is called uh, positive definite if uh, its value on any non-zero vector x uh, greater than zero. Other words, the quadratic form is positive definite if and only if um, initial bilinear form, which defines this quadratic form, is posi positive definite. Positive definite. Uh, easy to see that from uh, the um, property one, it follows that. Uh, quadratic, uh, the, the initial bilinear form B is also uniquely defined by the quadratic form. We can express the value of the bilinear form from the value of the quadratic form. Uh, namely, <coughs> namely, from the property uh, 1, it follows that bilinear form on the pair of the vector, uh, sorry, V and W is equal the ratio 1, 2. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Q, U plus V minus Q, U minus Q. Uh, 
as a word, we can uh, restore uh, the initial bilinear form in terms of the uh, quadratic form. Uh, by definition, the quadratic form u is equal to the value of the bilinear form on the pair of coincide vectors. If you substitute this expression on the uh, right hand side of this equality, we obtain that the right hand uh, is equal to u plus v by definition is equal b uh, u plus v u plus v uh, u uh, on u is equal b u u oh i'm sorry v uh, plus w v plus w v my mistake <coughs> b v plus w v plus w minus b v v minus v w w uh, now we can use uh, the linearity the property of linearity of a bilinear form with respect of uh, any argument with respect of First argument, we obtain that this expression is equal v uh, plus w v uh, plus b v plus w w minus b v v minus, minus v w w. And we can... Uh, on the next step, I also apply the um, uh, property of linearity with respect to our first argument, and we obtain the following expression v v plus b w v plus b v w plus b w w minus b v v minus uh, b w w uh, b v v v v v uh, we can reduce our expression to the following expression we obtain the sum of these two values uh, we can uh, Remark uh, that uh, our initial bilinear form is symmetric. It means that these values and these values <coughs> coincide. And uh, uh, we obtain twice and our calculation show that the initial bilinear form can be restored uh, in terms of the uh, quadratic form. Uh, easy to see uh, that this expression is coincides uh, with this. This expression is exactly equal to this, and this expression is exactly equal to this. And we restore uh, the value of the initial, mm, uh, initial uh, bilinear form. Uh, uh, we can uh, 
consider some a simple example uh, of the uh, concrete, uh, concrete form of the bilinear form. Let's suppose uh, that we choose some basis uh, of the vector space V. Let F be some basis of this vector space. Uh, if we choose the basis, we can correspond, uh, we can assign to um, the any vectors of this vector space uh, its uh, decomposition. Uh, we can present any vectors as a linear combination of the basic vectors and let x1, xn uh, are the coordinates of the vector x um, in the basis f. And the same way, let uh, y x present as a linear combination of the basic vectors f, j. And if you substitute this expression in the um, initial uh, bilinear form, uh, we can obtain uh, the expression of the value of this bilinear form in the terms of the coordinates of the vectors. And the, the sum coefficients a i j. I, um, I recall that these coefficients is exactly uh, the value of bilinear form on the pair of the basic vectors f i and f j. And this uh, entire uh, can be uh, can be rewrite in the matrix form, and this expression can be mm, rewrite as the product of the uh, coordinate vector x e, uh, the matrix A, and y e. Uh, x e be the coordinate vectors. Uh, y is the coordinate vectors, coordinates of the vectors y, and a is the, called the matrix of the bilinear form. And tires of this matrix is exactly equals uh, the values of the bilinear form on the pair of the basic vectors. And on the previous lecture, we proved uh, that the, any bilinear form can be mm, uh, can be uh, uh, written in the uh, following matrix form as a product of the column uh, transpose column vectors x a exactly row vectors matrix a and column column vectors y coordinate vectors of the vector y. Uh, for example, uh, ah, I'm sorry, uh, from this fact it follows that if we have, uh, if we have um, uh, quadratic form Q, this quadratic form can be uh, written in this, uh, in this coordinate form. In this formula we must identify vector y with vector x, you can put y is equal x. And in this case, q x is equal bxx. And from this formula, it follows this. The formula, <coughs> the coordinate, coordinate form of the quadratic, of the quadratic form. For example, if uh, the dimension of the vector space n is equal to, we obtain the following expression for the quadratic form, a11 x1 square plus twice a12 x1 x2 plus a22 x2 square. Uh, we also introduce the notion uh, of so-called canonical, uh, canonical form of the quadratic form. What does mean canonical form? Uh, canonical form is the sum of the squares. Now we prove that we can uh, choose some basis E, 
such that in this basis, quadratic form can be expressed as the sum of the squares of the coordinates of the vector uh, x in some basis. This is so-called canonical form of the quadratic Now we proved we prove the theorem which asserts that any quadratic form can be reduced to such canonical form. We start with some simple example and prove this theorem in the simple simplest case when n is equal to. In this case uh, is I mentioned above uh, quadratic form can be written in the following uh, form. Now I show how to reduce this canonical form uh, to the uh, how to reduce uh, this quadratic form uh, to the canonical form. Uh, we can to group uh, the element of this expression and transform uh, into sum of the squares. We will use the following simple formula or the square or the sum. I recall that the square or the sum is equal uh, sum of the squares and twice product of the summons. And if you use this simple formula, we can express, we can uh, group these two elements and we can uh, transform the sum into uh, square of the sum. Namely, I can uh, divide the sum, this expression, on the ratio 1 and this coefficient a11, and I can write in the bracket the following, uh, the following uh, sum a11 x1 plus a12 x2 square. Uh, easy to see that this expression is equal a11 square x1 square uh, plus 2 uh, 1 2 a11 x1 x square plus uh, a1 2 square x2 square. If I divide this expression onto uh, a11, I obtain this expression plus this term. And I must to subtract this term from this expression And uh, we uh, get uh, the presentation of this formula uh, in the sum of the squares. Easy to see that if I introduce the new variable, the new variable uh, x tilde 1, which is equal to this expression, and this expression I can rewrite as a, a following sum. Uh, the ratio 1, uh, a11, one, one, 
and in the square a11, a22 minus uh, a1 square. And this n times x2 square. Uh, and I obtain the uh, following uh, the following expression. I obtain the following expression. Uh, our initial quadratic form uh, uh, is uh, rewritten as the sum of the squares. We obtain uh, the following uh, the following expression. Now uh, we can uh, introduce uh, the new variables. Uh, let x1 tilde is equal a11 x1 plus a12 x2, and x2 tilde is equal x2. If we introduce such new variable, we can rewrite our um, logic form in the new variables uh, in the following in the following form. If I put this expression, I can note these coefficients by lambda 1, and these coefficients I can denote by uh, lambda 2. And I obtain that this expression is equal to sum lambda 1 x tilde x1 square plus lambda 2 x2 uh, tilde square. And I obtain uh, the canonical form of our initial form in the partial case when, mm, when the dimension is equal to. Is equal to. And we have uh, the sum uh, now, general method to reduce arbitrary quadratic form to the canonical form in the so-called uh, Lagrange method. Lagrange method, namely, <clears throat> uh, what uh, we have. Arbitrary. Now we will suppose uh, that uh, if we deal with arbitrary quadratic form, and uh, now the dimension of the vector space n uh, is arbitrary, uh, arbitrary uh, positive integer, and um, let f be uh, some uh, basis in the vector space basis of vector space V and in this basis we can uh, present our quadratic form in the following in the following form Uh, and uh, now 
I will uh, repeat the main step, which uh, uh, we did in this when uh, we uh, solve uh, the previous um, uh, previous uh, problem when we reduce uh, the quadratic form to the canonical form in the case when the dimension I n is equal to. You will repeat the main step uh, in the general, in the general situation. Uh, what does it mean on the uh, first step? We consider the all terms of this expression which contain the first variable x1. And the same way, uh, in the same way, we also consider the all terms uh, which uh, contain the first variable x1. Namely, uh, we obtain the following, uh, the following terms, a11 x1 square plus 2a1 uh, x1, x2, plus, and so on, plus uh, 2 times x1, xn, and uh, plus, uh, plus other, other terms. We can rewrite in the following form. Uh, ik goes integer from 2 to n. This this uh, term contains only a variable uh, which, uh, with numbers from 2 to n without those variable. And those summons contain uh, variable x1. And we also can uh, rewrite this expression mm, as a sum squares minus, uh, minus uh, sum expression, uh, which contains only, uh, only a sum of the squares of these variables. We also uh, divide it on the term on the first coefficients. We will suppose that these coefficients a11 uh, is not equal to zero. <coughs> if, uh, if this coefficient is equal to zero, we uh, can uh, choose some non-zero coefficients, coefficients and enumerate the variables. If all variables contain uh, contain Mm, only uh, zero coefficients uh, from the square. We can to group some uh, variable. We can uh, suggest that some of the mm, coefficients uh, uh, coefficients. Uh, um, from the co uh, from the variables from the different variables for example x1 x2 is not equal to zero and we must uh, introduce the new variables for example we can mm, introduce uh, the new variable x1 tilde and x2 tilde such that the first variable x1 is equal to the sum of these variables and x2 is equal uh, difference of these new variables x1 and x2. If you substitute these new variables in the initial expression, we obtain the following expression x1 tilde plus x2 tilde times x1 tilde minus x2 tilde. And after evident uh, Transformation we obtain the following the following expression, and we obtain that this expression we are right as a um, difference 
difference of sum from squares. And so we obtain that the <coughs> coefficients coefficients uh, of the uh, x1 square is not equal to 0. And uh, we obtain the mm, situation when the coefficients from the one of the square, one of the squares of the variables is not equal to 0. And we can apply uh, our method to this situation. And um, In this uh, situation, uh, we can uh, uh, we can write the inverse coefficients, and in the squares we can uh, we can write the sum of these elements and apply. Uh, Apply the operation. We can uh, consider the squares, the square of uh, uh, this expression, and uh, also we um, must subtract of the um, sum of the squares of these variables. If we uh, apply this operation to this term, we obtain this expression plus the sum uh, of the squares of this element. And uh, if we uh, can obtain uh, this expression, we must subtract the sum of these uh, squares. Oh, I'm sorry. You should see that we obtain. <laughs> the mm, square of some expression and plus the same expression uh, which contains only terms uh, only mm, only uh, variables x i and x t uh, x k when uh, the indexes indices i k goes from 2 to n and we uh, reduce Mm, our expression to the case when the expression contains less less numbers of the variables and after them we can apply our method to the uh, to the uh, second summons of our expression which contain uh, less uh, uh, less uh, variables. And um, step by step uh, we obtain the sum of the squares. We can introduce a new variable x to the 1 and we reduce our expression to the sum x new tilde 1 plus the new variables uh, a tilde i k x tilde i, x tilde j, and uh, x tilde k, and i k uh, goes from 2 to n. And after them, we apply our method to this expression. And we obtain then we obtain uh, the sum of the square. Uh, the next uh, important mm. assertion, the so-called uh, Sylvester uh, criterion. Uh, and now I mm, formulate 
the main uh, must uh, the um, all important important theorem. Uh, Sylvester, sir. Suppose that in the basis F one F N the quadratic form Uh, has uh, the following form and a e k is a uh, Let all determine nonce delta one, delta n where delta k is the determinant of the matrix A one one. A one K and so on A K one A K K. It's so called principal minors of the principal minors of the uh, matrix A. A is a matrix of our bilinear form. The minors of the matrix of such type is called uh, principal minors, and we uh, are not uh, equal zero. We suppose that all these minors. Delta k is not equal to zero. Uh, then, uh, then the quadratic form can be reduced to the canonical form. Uh, then there is a basis e one e n uh, in which the quadratic form can be is written as a sum of squares.
namely q at x is equal uh, delta 0 divided delta 1 x 1 square plus delta 1 divided delta 2 x 2 tilde square plus delta n minus 1 delta n x n square where delta 0 is equal 1 delta 1 delta n are the principal principal minors minors of matrix of matrix A. Uh, do you understand the formulation of this theorem? I repeat, we have the sum, we have the arbitrary quadratic form. This quadratic form uh, in the arbitrary basis has a matrix, matrix A. And the theorem asserts that exists such basis E in which uh, the matrix of quadratic form is a diagonal matrix. It means that the uh, quadratic form can be rewritten as a sum of the squares. And the coefficients uh, of this summons of the squares can be rewritten in terms of the principal minors, as a ratio of the principal minors. Uh, the first coefficient is a ratio uh, delta 0 uh, to the delta 1. Delta 1 is equal a11. Uh, delta 2 uh, is uh, determinant of this minus. In the previous example, we obtained such uh, expression uh, when we apply uh, the um, Lagrange method to the um, uh, quadratic form when the dimension was equal uh, to, was equal to. But in the arbitrary case, we have the same situation. The proof of this theorem is enough simple. We must Uh, we must mm, to construct the mm, basis, the basis E1, En, we construct using the following, uh, in the following form. We construct the basis uh, which uh, satisfies the following expression. This uh, orthogonal basis with respect to um, this quadratic form. Uh, we, uh, we must Uh, we um, uh, demand, uh, we um, uh, we uh, determine, we define this basis by the following uh, condition, that the value of the quadratic form on pair of any vectors of this basis is equal to zero. As a word, these vectors must be such uh, that uh, this vector orthogonal with respect to this quadratic form. If we uh, consider uh, this quadratic form as a sum analog of scalar product, we must uh, demand that these vectors uh, must be orthogonal with respect to this orthogonal form. Uh, 
maybe uh, for, 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 for minutes I finish the proof of this theorem. Uh, this condition, uh, easy to see that this condition is equivalent to the following uh, condition. Uh, the vector EK must be orthogonal to the initial uh, previous vectors uh, F1 and so on. Fk minus 1. This condition is equivalent to uh, this. And we can um, define, uh, we can introduce the some normalization of these uh, vectors if we uh, suggest that uh, the value of the our uh, bilinear form on the pair vector e k f k is equal to one. And if you write uh, this mm. expression in the matrix form, we obtain the following uh, the following uh, the following condition on this coefficients. Oh, I'm sorry. Then the following uh, conditions. Ah, F, I'm sorry, Fi, F1, F, uh, I. And uh, we obtain uh, the following uh, linear system. And the last uh, we obtain the following uh, linear system, and this linear system. Uh, has the following matrix. Easy to see that this coefficient is the coefficient of the initial matrix A. And alpha k1 and alpha kk is variable, is unknown. Uh, 
we can apply the grammar rule and to solve uh, this uh, linear system. Easy to see if we change the coefficients uh, before uh, the um, last ver variable alpha kk by the um, column uh, on the right hand, we uh, obtain exactly, we obtain uh, the determinant delta k minus 1. And matrix of this system, the uh, determinant of the matrix of this system, exactly the determinant delta k. Uh, we obtain the following, uh, the following matrix. A1 alpha K1 plus uh, A1 K alpha KK is equal to zero. A uh, K minus one, uh, one alpha K1 plus I K minus one. A alpha K K is equal to zero and A K one alpha K one plus A K K alpha uh, K K is equal one. We obtain the following system. Easy to see that the determinant of this system, uh, the matrix of the system is equal to delta one and uh, if I change this column on the this column, I exactly obtain the determinant of the uh, of the minors. In this case, I obtain uh, the following determinant. Determinant of the delta determinant of the matrix a11 a1 k and if i change this uh, column on this i obtain the following expression a11 a1 k minus 1 0 uh, a k minus 1 a k minus one uh, zero and the last uh, row uh, k one a k minus one one. Easy to see that the determinant of this determinant is equal delta k minus one, and we can apply. Uh, we can uh, apply uh, grammar method and uh, we obtain uh, that uh, coefficients alpha <coughs> kk in this matrix is exactly equal delta n minus 1 del delta n. And uh, easy to see that these uh, coefficients alpha uh, 1 1 alpha k k is exactly uh, coefficients of the diagonal form on this matrix. And uh, and uh, this last step. Uh, in the proof of this uh, theorem. Mm. This proof of this theorem, this coefficient is exactly alpha 1 1, uh, alpha 2 2, alpha k k. Uh, maybe one more minutes and we can consider some uh, simple example how to calculate this coefficient using the matrix. 
Might be one. Uh, you can see there's a full example. T at x is equal to x1 square 3 x1 x2 plus 4 x1 x3 plus x2 square plus x3 square. Find the canonical form on this matrix. Uh, we can write the matrix of this uh, quadratic form. The matrix is equal to these coefficients. Uh, I divided these coefficients on two. Uh, uh, these coefficients one, zero, two, uh, zero, one. We obtain the symmetric uh, matrix. These uh, coefficients I divide on two, and these coefficients uh, implies on the intersection of the one rows and second columns, and these symmetric coefficients. This one and this one also symmetric, and this one and this one also symmetric. And uh, delta one, by definition, uh, equal one. Delta one is this term. A11 is equal to. Delta two is equal to this determinant. Uh, one minus, okay, two minus uh, the ratio uh, nine four and is equal uh, the ratio minus one four and delta three the determinant of this matrix and uh, is equal to this determinant is equal to the ratio uh, seventeen four. Delta three. And the canonical form, the matrix, delta one, delta zero, the ratio delta one, plus the ratio delta one, delta uh, uh, two, and delta two, the ratio delta three. And we obtain the first ratio one, uh, divided to 1 to x1 square plus this ratio uh, delta mm, delta 1 minus 1 4 uh, divided to And the last uh, uh, coefficients mm. and we obtain uh, the following answer. The ratio one to x one square plus this ratio uh, minus eight x to square and plus uh, ah, minus minus the ratio one seventeen. Uh, just a minute, maybe a uh, mistake. Delta two, mm. delta one, delta two minus uh, 
Mm -hmm. Right. And we obtain the canonical form on uh, this matrix using Sylvester criterion. Easy to see that uh, the matrix is positive definite if and only if all these coefficients are greater than zero. And we obtain the criterion uh, for positive definiteness of the quadratic form. All coefficients, all principal manners must be greater than zero. And uh, the quadratic form is negative defined if all coefficients in this form uh, are negative defined. And uh, we obtain that these minors, uh, the signs of uh, the minors must be changed. Uh, delta 1 less or equal 0 delta 2, greater than 0 delta 3, less, and so on. In this situation, the ratio of these coefficients is negative, and we obtain the criterion for negative definiteness of the quadratic form. Uh, sorry, my time is over, and I finished.